Cancer Program, Junior Cooperatives and Secondary Schools, CPEA, and the Tam CC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This is the GBN News for today, Friday, August 7th, 2020. I am Beverly Tellisford. In the headlines, health officials investigating mail who submitted false information on entry to Grenada and subsequently escaped quarantine. Police investigating the publishing of a fake document using the police letterhead. Jekyll Caribbean's consultant not taking blame for destruction of the environment and ecosystem aligned to range developer, developers' project. And Fisherman warns Grenadians against doing online business after losing investment. In sports, August 6th remembered in Grenada's history after Kirani James won gold at the 400 meters in the 2012 Olympic Games. And in Around the Globe, Guyana's former president warns against a vulgar, divisive and vindictive campaign and 16 killed after Air India breaks in two on Kerala runway. The details of these and other stories after this message. Get high making money moves with the NLA's new Aces High Scratch Game with four chances to win. Beat the dealer's card to win the prize shown. Reveal an A symbol. And just like that, you are automatically a winner. Scratch away to win the top prize of $10,000. Win easy with Scratch. Must be 18 or older to play. play. Good evening, this is GBN News at 7. GBN is following reports that the Ministry of Health solicited the assistance of the Royal Grenada Police Force to locate a male who recently submitted false information to officials on entry in Grenada and subsequently escaped mandatory quarantine. Rina Pair has more in this report. Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Health, Kevin Frederick, announced on Friday that a male individual who recently came to Grenada lied about his travel history and is believed to be somewhere in the St. Patrick area. The PRO made this announcement on local radio program. The police are currently looking for a young man. I will not call his name, and I want to put that into context for you now. I'll tell you why. Yeah. The person in question came from the UK. The and I, I personally believe here, you know, yet that they mis they deliberately misled us into thinking that they came from Barbados. They were supposed to go into quarantine. They breached the quarantine protocol and went at the home. That person resides in St. Patrick. So I'm just putting it out there. Go and play juvie still. You do not know what risk. Frederick was at the time speaking about the serious implications of hosting any carnival activities in the country at this time. He also mentioned that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention on August 6th placed Grenada on a level three, alerting travelers to avoid non-essential travel to the country. The CDC recommends travelers avoid all non-essential, non-essential international travel to Grenada. Huh. Now, already given what we are experiencing, okay, yeah, with the the lack of, of, of funds and you know um, collection of uh, at our various ports of entries and what have you, and we are not having because we we are a tourism dependent country, and what that also means is that you know you know potential visitors may even think twice about coming to Grenada. I am wondering if the persons who are hell bent on this so called must play job, which I call nonsense, if they understand, you know, yeah, the, the effects of that likewise. We need to put that into context. GBN contacted Acting Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sean Charles, who expressed surprise that the media had such information. He told GBN, this information, and I quote, is not for public knowledge, and added that the issue is not one that he would want to speak to at this time. He did say to GBN that the issue is being investigated. Within hours of the announcement, GBN was 
police informed that the individual was located in Victoria St. Mark and was subsequently taken to the Guelph Police Station, where he is being held in an isolation room. Calls for a confirmation to the Minister of Health and the Acting Chief Medical Officer all went unanswered. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. A fake media release giving carnival lovers a false sense of hope has caught the attention of the Royal Grenada Police Force. Now investigations have begun as the RGPF is determined to find the mastermind behind the fake document. Christina John has this report. A media release using the official letterhead of the Royal Grenada Police Force made its round on various social media platforms on Thursday. The RGPF categorically denies the information contained in the purported police media release that there has been a change in the carnival regulations. The fraudulent release dated August 6th claims that the police have granted permission for carnival-like activities within communities from 5 a.m. until 11 a.m. during the period August 9th to 11th, 2020. Head of the Community Relations Department, Superintendent Vanny Cohen, says this act is unacceptable as it is intended to mislead the public. With the commissioner on it, and we've spoke, you know, wide wider than both me and the commissioner, and we've decided how we're going to respond. And the best way we thought we could have responded is to let everybody know that it was fake news. So we put out the fake news one, realizing that the office were tainted and compromised. We had to be able to restore some credibility and some reliance on, on, on what we do. And so we had to let everybody know it was fake news. So we designed the fake news one, and we sent it out to as many people as we can, notifying them that the information you may have seen before, that the IGPF is now authorizing Canada activities is in fact fake information, fake news. Superintendent Cohen says they will go at length to catch the culprit, even if the investigation may involve reaching out to Facebook. We find the culprit or culprits that are so impersonated at the office. Um, we're going to do all of the investigation that is needed and we're going to submit a file to the DPP for possible legal action. People should not be allowed to create this kind of a panic in society, um, utilizing means that are not legal, that are not lawful that has the potential to create chaos, you know, and, um, and get away with it. So if there is a culprit or culprits, we are definitely going to find ways and means to bring them to justice. The Royal Grenada Police Force is reminding the public that Carnival 2020 has been cancelled and as such, festivities are not allowed. Meanwhile, in unrelated news, Agnes Williams of Retreat St. David, who was reported missing, has been found. Williams was found Thursday, August 6, 2020, at Pomrose St. David and has since been reunited with her family. Christina John, GBN News. Carnival lovers and masqueraders alike will have to wait for August 2021 to celebrate. On Friday, Minister for Culture Nolan Cox called on the masses to make a special sacrifice this year, as the cancellation of Spice Mask 2020 is meant for the safety and greater good for all Grenadians. Details of this report. Freedom has no meaning without responsibility. Dead people have no rights for which they can champion. If we continue with the discipline we have shown over the last few months, we will go a long way in beating this pandemic challenge and be in a better position to be able to return in 2021 for a bigger and more revived carnival. Minister for Culture Nolan Cox sending a reminder to the public as he addressed the nation on Friday. This weekend would have been what many call the carnival weekend. However, COVID-19 has forced the cancellation of Spice Mass and all carnival festivities this year. The culture minister says as a government, they explored both the pros and cons and realized this is the best alternative at this time. We explored all possibilities, especially for the sake of the artists, the vendors, the hoteliers, taxi drivers, and all others who depend on this time of the year to augment their earnings. But in the end, we were cognizant of one simple fact, that there would be no economy to promote and no culture to celebrate in a nation that collapses under a pandemic. In the end, we call on everyone to make the sacrifice and to resist any temptation for gatherings in large numbers in these next few days. 
In the meantime, the Royal Grenada Police Force says it is ready to deal with people who violate the law. Head of the Community Relations Department, Superintendent Vanny Cohen, say they have come up with strategic ways for policing this weekend. This is carnival season even if we don't have carnival. And so the high-handed approach is not something we have looked at in the past and not something we're hoping to do. But enforcement, yes, we are going to enforce. So there are other ways and means that we're going to use this weekend to be able to bring people to justice. We have conceptualized a few of them yesterday. We are going to be on the ground. We're going to keep our eyes and our ears open. You may see activities for the weekend. Hopefully we don't, but we may see activities. And we may not see immediate police response to those activities. It doesn't mean that there will not be a response at some time. Um, there are different ways of doing things, and um, we have found different ways of bringing people to justice. With the Cyber Monarch on tonight, the superintendent reminds persons with establishment to adhere to the COVID-19 regulations, which stipulates no more than 20 persons at social gatherings and the use of face masks. Christina John, GBN News. Now, despite the emergency powers regulations being extended to August 19th, no extra leeway has been given to the general public, except for the purposes of exercising or going to the beach. Permission has been granted for virtual events in place of no carnival. However, Grenadians are still not permitted to engage in social or sporting activities in large numbers. Health Minister Nicholas Steele, in an interview with GBN, addressed the issue, especially as it relates to sporting activities. I've seen those activities going on. Um, what we want to avoid is any mass gatherings. So, so individuals have been um, playing matches for themselves, same way we allow the teams to, to play matches on their own or play games on their own. Um, individuals can, can, can come forward and play a foot soccer match or football match or, or, or so. Um, that's been happening. What we take a break, but still ahead, Fisherman warns Grenadians against doing business online after losing investment. Stay with us. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here, even when the future seems unclear. Because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Who wants to save 30%? Everybody. Now more than ever, Flo understands the need to make your dollar stretch. Our new bundles can help you save 30% off your current bill. Plus, get a free speed upgrade on your in-home internet. Simply add your mobile to your current home services account and save 30%. It's easy. Sign up now and save. All on the best fixed and mobile network on island. Visit a Flo store or call us at 1-800-804-2994 for more information. Flo, keeping you connected. Terms and conditions apply. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Eminent Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. Dreaming of taking a break and escaping to an idyllic, happy place? Well, finding it does not require you to go too far. You already live in paradise. All it takes is for you to go out and discover it. Grenada, Caracou, and Petit Martinique are blessed with a wide variety of accommodation that satisfy any taste and budget. Find the one that suits you and your family and treat yourself while having peace of mind that your health and safety is a priority. Knowing that we have gorgeous waterfalls, stunning beaches, and flavorful cuisine, let's be tourists in our own islands and enjoy paradise at home.
Okay, Google, what's the hottest topic in Grenada these days? Scanning social media, results found, Waggy T's virtual bingo. It's the Waggy T virtual bingo! And it's on again on Sunday, August 16th at 6 p.m. and will be held every two weeks. Imagine you can win US $10,000. US $10,000? Boy, tickets cost only 10 US dollars. Available on gotofet.com or at box offices island wide. We've got DJ music and live performance by Butcher Jab Lednek. Waggy T's Virtual Bingo. Try it. You will love the excitement. And it's easy to play. Sunday, August 16th. Get ready for Waggy T's Virtual Bingo. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning, Ariza says, thank you. Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, line boy, your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about a thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, it's people from Housing bad boy boy not bad excellent if you're thinking about constructing your home why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? you could visit them right down in the sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016 or check out their website hag473.com they go handle you they go jog your blocks they go draw your plan they go talk your materials <laughs> hey man wait wait the housing authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Welcome back. One fisherman is left in distress after he was defrauded $21,000 through an online business transaction to purchase two boat engines. Rina Pear tells us more in this report. Kenson Jerome, a fisherman in Waltham, St. Mark, says he is mentally stressed and emotionally drained after he was swindled 21,000 EC dollars used to purchase two boat engines online. A fisherman for over 30 years, Jerome explained that after receiving a loan, he wired transfer the money in December of last year to the online company based in Thailand. Videos, receipts, and other related documents were sent to him to confirm his purchase. 
To date, the engines, which were scheduled to arrive in January of 2020, is yet to reach Grenada. Our two engine was giving me problem for a little while now, a long time, a couple of years, and I intend to purchase two engines, so I end up going online. Uh, I, I look at two engines on Alibaba, January coming past, February, then we messaged them in March. They told me they both sink. They told me they both sink. So I said they both sink. How did they both sink and then yeah, and we could, and then make world news? Then I start thinking funny. Jerome, who is now seeking assistance to retrieve his money, says at first the company would respond to his email as he inquired about his equipment or refund. This, he said, ended a month or so ago, claiming they're no longer based in Thailand and have moved to another country. And all I go to, they say, there's nothing they could do, they can help me. I go to FIU. They say, nothing they could do, then people look like fraud. They affect me real bad, so me, a family man. My kids stay with me, and everything is me. And then, but before that, I had two engines, and I was decided to sell them. So I get a lot of trouble. But I decided, you know what, boy? I won't sell the engine yet. I'll wait and see when them two engines come. Then I'll think about what I'm doing. And it's a good, and it's a good thing I didn't, really sell, I didn't really sell them engine. Like if I sell the engine, the bank would have taken back my access. The St. Mark resident said he would not like to see anyone make the same mistake he did and advise other fishermen and members of the public to be careful with their online business transaction. As it is now, uh, I want a lot of help, public-wise and for other people in general, to be smart. And in, at the end of the day, the same set of people had the engine online for sale, so I don't know what's going on. And me, me, they make me feel me not the first one to scam, and I don't want nobody else to get scam again by that same set of people. So I don't care. At the end of the day, no. As it is no. I watch at myself as a loser. And if I to lose, uh, I'll lose the right way by exposing them. For GBN News, I am Rina Pe reporting. Using culinary cuisine to boost our tourism product. That's the aim of the young chef highlighted in this week's business feature. Chef Andre Church used his time during the COVID-19 pandemic to come up with his business, restaurant training and advisory services. The chef says his business offers training in the areas of menu costing, recipe development, food safety and other culinary workshops. The idea, he says, came from wanting to improve the overall standard of the culinary cuisine product in Grenada. In an interview with the GBN, Church says his appreciation for culinary arts drove him towards the inception of his business. So I'm a professional chef and culinary educator and the business really came about with my love for the industry I at this time I did not want to open the next restaurant in Grenada but I wanted to assist and create value and draw awareness to certain things in the industry the chef says his aim is for his program to reach far and wide and for it to catch the attention of many Grenadians, as he believes culinary cuisine can be used as a way to improve Grenada's tourism product. I intend to work along with the hotels, the restaurants, even the street food vendors, because they play an important role in terms of our culture and the things that we eat when we grab and go, pick up something quick. Um, the food safety aspect as relates to that is an integral part of it. I even have ideas as the, to the way we can improve our street food um, product that we have here on island. Church left a message appealing to youth like himself to strive for anything they want to achieve. Once young persons are enthusiastic in whatever they wish they desire to do, anything is possible. I have had some opportunities that I thought would have never been possible in my lifetime. But today I can stand here and say I'm grateful for that. So once we put our mindset there, you, I'm a high, I'm, I'm high on education, getting an, an, an education in whatever field, culinary arts, business, um, you can definitely reach the world. 
Paul Granita. That was the name of Thursday night's majestic Thursday parody Queen Show, which made light of the carnival withdrawal feelings being felt by many because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the cancellation of Spice Mass 2020. As boy say, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, watch me forget it. January, February, March, April, May, June, June, July, August, October, November, November, December, get it too. We want the job. Give us a job. Black Lives Matter. Two contestants participated in the Poor Grenada Queen show put on last evening, which would have been Majestic Thursday had Spice Mass 2020 not been cancelled. The contestants represented the six mainland parishes, three parishes each, as they paraded on a fully designed stage. Dress is long sleeve and is accentuated by a pearl necklace that blends in color to the dress. Social media erupted in laughter at the comedic presentations put on by two young men, Duan the Entertainer Modest and Prince, which was live streamed for free. The collaborative event was produced by Dillian Walters. He spoke to GBN about the concept of the show. Well, the idea really stemmed from Prince James and Duan um, after having a conversation uh, uh, sometime after 11 on Wednesday night, 11 p.m. on Wednesday night. When you know, because we were just talking about all these stresses of carnival, and you know, everybody so seemed to be so tensed up, you know, about what not to do and what should happen and what should not happen. And the guys felt like, okay, maybe we, we should we should do a queen show because we, you know, saying that Thursday is, is, is majestic Thursday, and there was nothing happening on that night, so we decided, yeah, well, not. So they came to me, so they, um, let's do a queen show. So I said yes. You know, immediately I looked at Marissa, who was there with us as well. I said, Marissa, let's do a queen show. Uh, she bawled, oh my lord, are you crazy? I said, no, we do not clean show. And that's where everything went in motion, I mean. Poor Grenada, Walters said, was a euphemism for the current miserable atmosphere covering the country since the cancellation of Spice Mass 2020. He said the production of the event, which included venue, set design, music and master of ceremonies, went smoothly, thanks to good relationships with the stakeholders involved. Well, as I said, the guys um, went around and Marissa worked with the guys. Um, Duan would have all made contact with his, his production team, his full team, because Duan came with an entire team of makeup artists and, um, you know, his nail tech and everybody uh, to make this thing happen last night. You know, the MC, Bukhi, we, you know, he was contacted the, the, uh, Thursday morning and immediately said yes. You know, um, just everybody was just on board with the idea. Um, you know, we got Donald to come in to assist with, with, with the stage management who up to say four o'clock in the afternoon still thought it was a joke you know but she, she, she agreed and she came and so you know she was in as part of the whole team as per the judges final decision both contestants tied and were crowned at the end of the night walter said another event is already in the pipeline we take a break, but still ahead, a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure Development says they face challenges from vendors who refuse to remove their goods from the market. This is News at 7. Stay with us. Missing the mass? No, here's an opportunity to win big with the Grenada Distillers Limited. Purchase any specially matte bottle of pure white or special dark for a chance to win. Look out for the Missing the Mass scratch ticket and win prizes instantly. Available at supermarkets island wide. Prizes include mobile top up, hydration backpacks, domino sets, shot glasses, Clax coat products, t shirts, and other spice mass merchandise. Plus much more. Grand prize. The ultimate missing the mass Clax Court Beach Line for you and 10 friends. Food, drinks, music, and more. It's the missing the mass scratch and win promotion. Clax Court Rum, Grenada's number one rum. They say sometimes less is more, but at Real Value IGA Supermarket, we believe more is more. And since we are all about more, we want to buy more from farmers like you so we can sell more to our customers. If you have a farmer's ID and fresh produce to sell, Real Value IGA wants to buy. For more information, contact Real Value IGA on WhatsApp at 405-4405 or give them a call at 439-2121. 
Hills and Valley MedCare Center, located on Grenville Street, St. George's, has a highly professional team that gives excellent service in massage therapy, physiotherapy, speech therapy, medical consultation, and more. Hills and Valley MedCare Center sells a wide range of medical supplies, offers home visits for patients in Grenada and Carrier Coo, and opens Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. through to 7 p.m. Visit or call Hills and Valley MedCare Center today, 435-6904. Bro. Hello? I can't see you. What's good? But I can't even hear you. Yo. Hello? Hello? Ah. Okay, I see. I'm good. I'm coming in. Ah. There you are. Live the experience right now. Enjoy high-quality video calling today. Stream, upload, and share with Digicel Super Fast LTE Network. Visit our stores today and live the experience today. Digicel. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. From Hillsboro to Point Saline, Flo has you covered. We value and support our future generations. We understand the importance of saying hello. Keeping you connected is our priority. We have been working day and night to improve our networks because we believe a connected country moves forward. We will continue to work to give you the best mobile LTE and home networks because with Flo, it only gets better better. Welcome back. Infrastructural work on the St. George's Vendors Market continues as the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Implementation seeks to enhance the setting of the market and support compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. Rena Pair has more in this report. Marina Jessime, permanent secretary for the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Implementation, says building two of the market is almost 100% ready to resume business and building one is not far behind. Most of the recommendations made from the former two inspections that we are almost 100% complete. Let me start at building number one. The floor, the styling is 100% completed and it's beautiful tiles, very um, quality tiles, small buildings in that area where Jiga Man is, and so they were inspected before and they passed the inspection. Um, they have the, the material, etc. But we are looking at the market as a holistic piece. So, building number two, the tiling of the floor is 100% completed and it's, it's looking very nice as well. The, the, the grow, the cleaning up. The outstanding work in that building is that we have to paint, and the arrangement for the painting is, is, uh, is already finalized. The permanent secretary stated that while work is progressing, they have been faced with challenges from vendors who refused to remove their goods so that their boots can be tiled. She is calling on them to cooperate with the ministry. Because we're calling persons, we don't want to make it public, we're calling persons, but they are not coming out as usual. So I really, because of the cooperation we have, if 85% of the of building one is completed, the persons who are on the other side, I really want to use this opportunity to call up, to call them up to come and remove so that we can, because this is an investment government is making into your business. But if they do not remove it by Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, I will have to instruct the contractor to leave and they will have to um, tile it for themselves, which I don't want to. According to the PS, the ministry is working steadfast to have vendors return to the market in a much more organized and comfortable environment. The next scheduled health and safety inspection at the St. George's Vendors Market is August 10th. For GBN News, I am Rina Pe reporting. St. Vincent Grenada Air, SVG Air, has resumed its service between Grenada and Karakou. The flight itinerary includes Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, departing Morris Bishop International Airport at 8.30 a.m. and returning at 8.30 p.m. on the said days. SVG Air, due to the pandemic, had ceased flights and even prior had encountered several issues which hindered travel between Grenada and the Sister Isles. SVG Air is also in the process of expanding its network, providing connectivity between Grenada, Barbados, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's time now for another GBN ISA compliments Clevision Eye Center.
A good eye captures all. GBN Eyesore is brought to you by Clear Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight's I saw features video footage of the salt pond at Lasseter's Beach in St. David. Citizens recently started replanting trees near the pond in a bid to improve the condition of the area. You can send in your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. We now join Sigoni Mohammed on our sister station, TV6, for a regional outlook. Be like, Sigoni, what's happening? All right, Anselm, let's take a look at what's happening. For those of you heading into this weekend and wondering what kind of weather you're going to face, well, first up, the Atlantic is very quiet. We are, however, tracking some tropical waves. That's going to bring in some really interesting precipitation values for us into this weekend. We got some rain today and into the rest of the weekend, pushing all the way into election day, we're going to be seeing that tropical wave activity mixing in with the ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone. So both of these features combined will be bringing us some wicked kind of weather into this weekend. So take a look at what's happening right now. Trinidad and Tobago pretty much covered by cloud. We will see that partly cloudy to mostly cloudy spell over the rest of the evening with showers and ice isolated thunder shower activity. The thing is, we're going to see this trend throughout the entire period right into Tuesday of next week. So from tonight, what we can see, nice cool temperatures, you'll be pulling the covers, hugging up with your loved ones, but then you'll get that isolated thunderstorm kicking in at times, lows dipping to 23, 24 degrees Celsius for Trinidad this evening into the weekend. But during the daytime period, things change up significantly. You get periods of sunshine and cloudiness, so it's really warm, and then things begin to cool down significantly with shower and thunder shower activity picking up. Remember, where we have those heavy downpours, even into election day, look out for gusty winds and the possibility of street or flash flooding. That is likely. Have the umbrellas on hand even when you're going into the polling stations. Believe it or not, you're going to need it. Tonight in Tobago as well, a similar spell, clearing up in a couple of areas, but showers kick up just over midnight. Your temperature is not too bad in Tobago, but on the warm side though, 24, 25 degrees Celsius, that's what we are expecting for this weekend into Monday, Saturday through Sunday, though. You're going to see that mixture of sunshine and cloudiness yet again. Tropical wave activity passing over the islands and the ITCZ as well, bringing in those heavy downpours and electrical discharges or lightning. Take note, it's still ridiculously warm. Temperatures getting up to 31, 32 degrees Celsius during the daytime period, but you want to pay attention to what's happening. Have the umbrellas on hand. Look out for the gusty winds and the possibility of that street flooding. I'm emphasizing this because that's the kind of feature that you're going to expect well into this weekend. For more information on your tides, well, you can check us out on social media. I'm there at Sigoni. That's a wrap on your forecast. I'll see you soon and have a great weekend. Certainly. Tropical shipping is fast and reliable. Always on time, safe and affordable. Friendly staff here to connect you. Tropical worldwide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hassle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load with tropical shipping. So we ship everything. I can't wait to ship with tropical. I can't wait. No package to be close, no, I cannot wait to ship with tropical. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to Island Life.
Missing the mass? No, here's an opportunity to win big with the Grenada Distillers Limited. Purchase any specially matte bottle of pure wine or special dog for a chance to win. Look out for the Missing the Mass scratch ticket and win prizes instantly. Available at supermarkets island wide. Prizes include mobile top up, hydration backpacks, domino sets, shot glasses, Clax Code product, t shirts, and other spice mass merchandise. Plus much more. Grand prize. The ultimate Missing the Mass Clax Code Beach Line for you and 10 friends. Food, drinks, music, and more. It's the Missing the Mass scratch and win promotion. Clax Code Rum, Grenada's number one rum. Opio.com Sale, sale, sale. All the outlets, hotspot outlets. You're going to go to the Carnage, the Grenville, or the Sutter's hotspot. And you get sales and deals on all items. You can get these on potato. You can get these on salt fish, onion, garlic, mackerel, toilet paper. And we even have the currants and the raisins at $10 per pound. Lowest price island wide. So people just come down or go up or go up front, but just make sure and go to hot spots. Nine artists, two rounds of performances, $75,000 in cash prizes to be won, plus $10,000 for the Digicel People's Choice. Friday, August 7th, it's the first ever Cyber Monarch Groovy and Power Soka event, powered by Sunshine Promotions and Digicel. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. At Communal, we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online. At Communal, we see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. Weather for Grenada, Caracom, Petit Martinique valid for tonight and the following three days. Weather tonight mostly fair at first and windy, becoming partly cloudy with a medium chance of brief, brief light to moderate isolated showers. Tonight's minimum temperature 25 degrees Celsius, winds not easterly to easterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Seas moderate, waves up to six feet in open water. A small craft advisory is in effect. Tides are currently falling and would be low at 12.30 a.m. 
Sunrise tomorrow, 556. Weather for Saturday, August 8th, partly cloudy, hazy and windy, with some light to moderate showers during cloudy spells and a low chance of isolated thunder. Weather for Sunday, August 9th, partly cloudy, hazy and windy, with some fair spells and a medium chance of light, brief showers. And weather for Monday, August 10th, mainly fair and windy, with a chance of few isolated morning and nighttime showers during partly cloudy spells. Stay with us. Sports is next. Sporting fans, Thursday, August 6th, which was yesterday, will always be remembered in Grenada's history after Kirani James won gold at the 400 meter in the 2012 Olympic Games. James won the 400 meters Olympic gold in a time of 43.94 seconds, a national record, earning Grenada its first ever Olympic medal and becoming the first non-US runner to break the 44 second mark. A prior week in an appearance on Sports Talk, which is a social media program interviewing prominent Grenadian sporting figures, James was quizzed on whether a quarter miler can go below the 43 second mark. Yeah, I, I, I think it's possible. I think anybody that could do it, I think it would be way, you know, because he's been the closest to it. So, um, but yeah, I think it's possible. I think anything, you know, is possible, especially when you have that level of competition and, you know, all the guys, you know, just you know, keep on improving and, 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 um, and getting better. So, yeah, I, I think it's possible. The former world champion also said he is still interested in representing Grenada in a 4 by 400 meter relay at the World Championships or Olympics. Of course, I think it's um, something that for me is, is it just gives you an element of just teamwork and team spirit, you know, so um, yeah, it's, it's something I'm, I'm still very open towards. He says it will only take five competitive runners for that team to have a chance. However, the Athletic Association or such has not engaged him in that regard. Uh, not really. I think um, we haven't had a conversation about it in terms of medal prospects or anything. I think the main thing is just to try to get a team out there to see how good we can be. I think the biggest thing is that we know that the, the there is talent, it's just harnessing it and putting us together to see what, you know, kind of performance we can make. So before we even think about, you know, um, medals or anything like that, we just have to go out there and try to run. We now join our colleagues at TV6 for more sporting news. Not and all 162 players, officials, and administrators who travel to Trinidad and Tobago for the Caribbean Premier League or well, they have tested negative for COVID-19. The traveling party was tested on arrival to these shores. They will now be kept in quarantine for the, in the official hotel for 14 days, during which time they will be tested regularly. If any member of the party is found to have contracted the virus, they will be removed from the hotel and placed in further isolation in accordance with the current protocols in Trinidad and Tobago. As for now though, all those who have arrived in TNT are free from COVID-19. Well, here comes football and Kevin Molino's chase for a first MLS title continues tonight as his Minnesota United face off against his old club, Orlando City. The winner of this semi-final will meet the Portland Timbers in Tuesday's final. Well, last evening, Portland in green met the Philadelphia Union in the first semi-final in Orlando and Andre Blake with a brilliant fingertip save to deny the Timbers in the first 10 minutes of play. on he could do nothing from the corner. Jeremy Ibobisi getting on the right side of the defender for the easy header. Philly could have responded from the penalty spot just before the break, but Sergio Santos, well, he did exactly what you just saw. And 78 minutes, and Philadelphia's 
hopes would dent it even more when Sebastian Blanco headed home at the far post from a knockdown corner. The union again susceptible from corners 2-0. Portland, Philadelphia did make an interesting end to the contest when they pulled one back to Andrew Wooten, who scored from a rebound from a... Yamiro Montero free kick. Five minutes to go in regulation, but no more scoring as Portland Timbers, the 2015 champions, held on for the 2-1 win and the spot in the final. Interestingly, all the favorites did not make the semifinal stage, so this year a possible new MLS champion can be crowned on Tuesday. Again, tonight, Kevin Molino and the Minnesota United face Orlando City Magic from 8 p.m. Well, Europa League steps in and Wolves held off a determined Olympiacos to advance to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Spanish team Sevilla also made the cut with a narrow win, while Bayer Leverkusen and Basel also held their nerve to advance. Basel went into their home. Wolverhampton Wanderers hosted Olympiacos with the first leg ending 1-1. Here the Wolves had a chance to go ahead following an infringement inside the box. Raul Jimenez converted the penalty nonchalantly in the ninth minute as Wolverhampton Wanderers won the game 1-0 and advanced 2-1 on aggregate. Bayer Leverkusen came into this match with a 3-1 advantage from the first leg against Rangers. And the German side won the game 1-0 thanks to Moussa Diaby who scored in the 51st first minute. Bayer Leverkusen advanced to the quarters 4-1 on aggregate. Following a goalless first leg, Sevilla, who were at home, scored twice against Roma. Sergio Regulon broke the deadlock in the 22nd minute. And in the 44th, Yusuf and Nesri got the insurance item as Sevilla won 2-0 to also reach the last eight. Vinod Narwani, Chiefs Export. It's Curry Duck Thursday and tonight's play of the day. Pakistani pacer Mohamed Abbas was on fire and clean bold Ben Stokes for no score. What a beauty with Stokes getting a duck. Let's see it again. The bowler got some late movement which had the feisty Ben Stokes totally gobsmacked. So for that brilliant delivery which sent Stokes packing for a duck, Mohamed Abbas gets tonight's TV6. Off today. I'm convinced that that dog had some issues. Hey, that's it for sport for the team. I'm James Saunders. See you later. For the program on the globe. Leader of the People's National Congress Reform and former President David Granger has warned the People's Progressive Party of consequences from what he says is a vulgar, divisive, and vindictive campaign of alienation against former ministers and public servants. Former ministers whose normal residences are located in rural and hinterland regions were swiftly ordered to vacate their government quarters unreasonably within 36 hours. Public servants were locked out of their offices without explanation. Contracted officials were threatened with arbitrary and summary termination of their service. The PNC recalls the violence unleashed by PPP hooligans against innocent school children traveling on a school bus at Bath Settlement in the Mahaika Burbis region on Friday the 6th of March in the wake of the elections. In a statement Friday, Granger said the coalition will also lawfully challenge the declaration of the election results. People's National Congress warns the People's Progressive Party to desist from pursuing this dangerous pattern of aggression against officials, members of society, and persons perceived to belong to other political parties. The PPP will bear responsibility for the consequences of its conduct. The PNC and APNU coalition have stated repeatedly from the start of the electoral process that they expected a lawful declaration of the Elections Commission. We have never altered that position. The PNC cannot endorse a flawed report and will continue its campaign 
to ensure that the votes of all Guyanese are accurately recorded, tallied, and reported. Meanwhile, the APNU and AFC coalition is registering its dissatisfaction with the PPP's newly installed cabinet, stating that it lacks gender and ethnic diversity, which will impede Guyana's growth instead of enhancing it. Here is more from Wendell Badri in this HGPTV report. The Alstead Coalition Party, APNU AFC, earlier on Thursday issued a statement to the press criticizing President Irfan Ali's cabinet of not comprising the constitutionally mandated 30% requirement of women folk that should make up the party's quota in the National Assembly. Further, the party is accusing the newly installed government of only including seven afro guyanese as part of its cabinet. The coalition in its statement called on the PPP to answer to the people of Guyana as to why such a relatively small number of women and afro guyanese have been named in its cabinet. The party also submitted that this move is in stark contrast to and a backward step from the 11 women ministers who served in the APNU AFC administration. This was the most women ever to have served in any cabinet in Ghana's history. President Irfan Ali on Wednesday swore in nine persons to serve at the various ministerial levels of government at the Artichon Conference Center, of which seven are women, six are of African descent, and approximately nine persons comprise the youth population. This newscast reached out to two of the newly appointed ministers for comments, but both were unavailable at the time. The coalition party described itself as the most diverse in the history of Ghana, with more than 10 indo guyanese and persons of indigenous extractions serving at the cabinet level alongside their colleagues. This was in addition to numerous high-profile appointments at the highest levels of government, inclusive of state agencies, state boards, and in diplomatic corps, which did not apply any ethnic quota as the PPP is now clearly using. The coalition for the claims that PPP had in the past not named a single Afro-Guyanese to head any of Ghana's diplomatic missions. The APNU AFC says it is not surprised by the extreme lopsidedness of gender and ethnic diversity in the PPP cabinet and the application of what appears to be an ethnic and gender quota. It also speaks to the lack of depth and diversity in the PPP's leadership and among their own ranks, which will invariably result in flawed and partisan decision-making that will impede Ghana's growth and development rather than enhance it. Wendell Badri for HGP Nightly News. Further afield, at least 16 people were killed and 123 others wounded when a passenger jet skidded off the runway after landing in heavy rain in the southern state of Kerala. The Air India Express flight from Dubai was repatriating Indians stranded overseas amid the coronavirus pandemic. The plane was carrying 190 passengers and crew, the Ministry of Civil Aviation said in a statement on Friday. Among them were 10 infants. Abdul Karim, a senior Kerala state police officer, said the dead included one of the pilots of the Air India Express flight. He said at least 15 of the injured were in critical condition and that rescue operations were over. That's it for the program on the Globe. When we return, a recap of the headlines. Recapping the headlines, health officials investigating a male who submitted false information on entry to Grenada and subsequently escaped quarantine. Police investigating the publishing of a fake document using the police letterhead. And a fisherman warns Grenadians against doing online business after losing investment. In sports, August 6th remembered in Grenada's history after Kirani James won gold at the 400 meter in the 2012 Olympic Games. In Around the Globe, Guyana's former president warns against vulgar, divisive and vindictive campaign and 16 killed after a India bricks in two on Kerala runway. Now, if you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online on gbn.gd or on GBN television Facebook. Facebook page or YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Beverly Tellisville, and that's news. Good night.